may please invite on stage mr aman mittal ias deputy secretary water supply and sanitation department government of maharashtra can we have a huge round of applause ladies and gentlemen thank you um, i haven't made a very colorful kind of a presentation but still if it can go live that will be okay otherwise i can just start on this i just put in the pointers so uh, while it is getting loaded i'll just uh, speak a bit about the mrdp projects i just mentioned so because in 2019 i was there in kolhapur so when the ndma team came the ndma is national disaster management authority so the main observation that they had for the floods that uh, kind of devastated kolhapur and sangli at that time was that forecast based water management is important so uh, a lot of you are probably from water resources department also and i had also worked in that uh, uh, water resources department government of india during my 3 uh, months of assistant secretaryship one thing that we kind of need to start understanding is that earlier there were norms of uh, there were very fixed norms ki itna agar pani bhar gaya tab hum chhodenge but i think uh, a very beautiful uh, uh, observation of ndma was ki now what is happening is you are finding a lot of water coming in very small uh, periods of time so that exactly is what happened in most of the floods which happened in the uh, recent years so uh, a forecast based uh, water management was one of the most important uh, uh, observations of ndma and in that context i uh, i believe this uh, the conference the topic of this conference the leveraging technology and i think decision ma uh, decision making based on technological inputs is going to be very very useful in the long run because uh, probably all most of our infrastructure that we are now in the process of upgrading both in water resources as well as water supply department will find itself at fault when things you know require to be changed at the last moment because infrastructure is a long term aspect while most of the disasters or changes that we are looking at happen in a very short term or a medium term so probably even while we are creating infrastructure one of the things that we would uh, water infrastructure specifically and that uh, pertains equally to uh, water supply department also is that whenever we are making infrastructure can we have areas which allow for modifications at the right time to so that there is resilience which get developed so i think that is what we are also trying to do in this mrdp project as part of matlab i have seven additional work in uh, this organization called miltra to mrdp is project is uh, as pmu i'm looking at that so that is one thing that is going to be needed to be replicated across all projects in all the at least all the landslide prone and the flood prone regions in the state if not the country but yeah th i think that is one thing that i wanted to share and luckily sir we are working with sir only on this mrdp project and he mentioned it so that is something that uh, probably will need to be taken care of in uh, in the very short term because once your infrastructure project starts there is very little scope to change in while it gets completed so i think one of the issues that even mjp is facing that when the when a project starts towards the end of it when uh, you know people say ki make these changes incorporate these things and it becomes very very difficult to you know probably have a different source or have a different um, uh, infra or architecture to it so i think that is something uh, which we'll have to keep in mind as we go forward second thing uh, which i believe is needed to be kept in mind uh, as we go forward in this is probably the water usage now whenever we talking about maybe 55 lpcd sometimes we used to talk about 140 lpcd so these are numbers which may or may not have some logic to it but what we need to understand is we are a, a developing country I, i don't know how much of you how uh, how many of you have followed the paris uh, accords but as a country we need to understand that our demands are going to grow and water is going uh, water demand is going to grow both industrial industrially as well as at the household level probably the drinking water demand is going to be proportionate only to the population growth but the other needs you know you will people will have more cars people will have more uh, you know vehicles people will have uh, more uh, things that they do in, for leisure so that lpcd calculation whatever we are doing right now will anyways 
रिक्वायर चेंज इन द लॉन्ग एन ऑफ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो दैट इज वन थिंग दैट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सो एंड फॉर दैट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज नॉट योर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वाटर फॉर दैट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वुड एसेंशियली इन माई ओपिनियन बी फाइंडिंग अप्रोप्रिएट सोर्सेज सो आई थिंक वन ऑफ द डिस्कशन दैट वी आर हैविंग इन मेनी ऑफ माई डिस्कशन विद पी एस आर कुड नॉट कम टूडे बट ही इज वेरी फोकस्ड ऑन दिस फैक्ट ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग सोर्स इफेक्टिव सोर्स स्ट्रेंथनिंग मैकेनिजम्स बिकॉज यू विल प्रोवाइड वाटर वेन यू हैव वाटर सो दैट इज अनदर डोमेन दैट विल हैव टू काइंड ऑफ थिंक अबाउट इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो प्रोवाइडिंग वाटर इन द लॉन्ग रन i think some of you are also working in urban domain so that is one another aspect i wanted to touch upon because urban domain is something that is going to face the biggest problem uh, challenge in terms of water in two ways one is obviously the urban challenge that you see and i'm not going to talk about that but the other thing is that you will see a greater shift of uh, a greater migratory shift happening towards cities where uh, for you know more amenities and everything and unless we are able to provide policies which uh, allow for water to be a very important part of you know your urban planning your fsi planning your road planning your you will find problems in the long run and i think a developing problem right now is bangalore one problem that we all know is cape town if those of you who do not know about cape town it went through something called as a zero day where the city administration said that we cannot supply water anymore i think it happened in 2019 but bangalore is one of the indian examples bangalore is full of lakes i think those of you who know about that city it is full of lakes i don't think there is a shortage of water as such but the problem is a water supply those of uh, uh, i mean i was uh, latur municipal commissioner few years back latur was the one which uh, for which water had to be supplied from trains what was the reason not the lack of availability of water but the lack of effective water management as you correctly said because when i looked at the data i said the amount of water that was carried by the trains is hardly equivalent to probably one or two days of water requirement of the city then why the entire hype was there lato still i do not know still but at least when i was there it used to get water once in 7 days 8 days we were bringing up a project to make it to two days three days maybe one day in next two three years i do not know whether it's successful or not but my limited point is that what is going to be important is your water infrastructure so on these domains i think i'll just uh, uh, focus on this uh, some of these technological solutions for uh, water management so i think one uh, domain that is will be most crucial in coming times and i'll try to make it faster from now on because it will be data collection something that we have been very bad at in this country not only maharashtra in this country water collection uh, data collection especially in the field of water is totally mismanaged i would say so that is something that we'll all have to work upon on the basis of that we go to predictive analysis where you will have greater requirement of water probably in the next 5 years 10 years smart irrigation system sir has already talked about water treatment recycling that will be useful when you are looking at you know increasing water uh, like uh, the elastic supply uh, increase in demand like you know the vehicle will increase so you do not need to provide treated water for that so i think that is something that water treatment and recycling projects will uh, come up in a very big way one other uh, domain can be probably industrial water supply where do not need treated water can we have you know stps are coming in almost all urban areas now can we find a, a solution between midc and or maybe the industrial associations and the you know the water supply departments or the urban uh, corporations to have a pact wherein you can supply stp water to uh, you know industries singapore to for those who know about singapore singapore actually provides drinkable water out of your uh, sewage water so i think that is one level which will take a long time for us to go to 
so yeah i mean there are many ways of uh, data collection and monitoring we are also kind of finalizing the data policy of the state of maharashtra probably it will be finalized it will come out as a policy in the next uh, maybe 4 or 5 months but it will be finalized in the next 15 20 days so what we need to do is we have to become compliant with the way we collect data what we realized is when we do not collect data and then we do not know how to use that data i think one of the examples that i saw was in one of our projects and groundwater projects where the owner of the data was uh, i think gsda and we wanted it to be used for mjp and i think th th those kind of problems will be solved once this data policy comes into place so but that is something we need to uh, be very careful of so i have already talked about this data collection part so i won't go much into details of it this is something which i believe it's going to be very very useful ki once you have the data the predictive analysis is most important so what do we mean by predictive analysis is that when we looking at something like a 55 lpcd or a 140 lpcd or whatever lpcd or where which areas in urban areas need to be developed and when we are creating that infra at that point of time only if we have a good uh, predictive analysis not only based on population growth as we have right now but also in terms of you know the industrial growth that we are looking at the investment growth that we are looking at then you will be able to find a much better uh usage of water both in terms of water supply as well as in terms of your irrigation projects because uh, and that will also reduce the floods and droughts that keep happening uh droughts i don't know how much it will help in the droughts but yes for floods it will be extremely useful and uh, another thing it will be useful for is uh, probably your uh, industrial growth because a lot of times what we've seen is in fact one of the presentations we made for the maratwada water grid one of our uh, uh, presentation to government of india and our uh, point was that whenever you're looking at maratwada if you even look at the dead water storage of most of these that is more than the water requirements of the entire region twice over so there are other reasons why it did or did not go through but i think that is one very important aspect through which we can uh, probably make a very strong case for a better technology usage or better infrastructure projects in the long run and obviously water allocation during peak agricultural seasons smart irrigation projects i will not say much about it the only thing i'll say is that when i was in second year in college i made a, a agricultural uh, sensor based irrigation system is what we de developed uh, i then got into the service or so didn't take it forward but that i think now is the time for it to come the idea was simple that you have sensors very simple project you have sensors you have uh, data coming in from you know data centers which provide information to all the villagers if you if that data can communicate it to them and then it can make its own decision rather than the farmer switching on the valve the valve was automated so if it is expected that rainfall will happen in the next 24 hours you do not irrigate the fields too much so all those things so i mean see, the what is not important is ki how you do it what is important is to be able to provide an ecosystem because this is something that in my opinion has to be uh, private sector driven but we have to provide that ecosystem we have to allow our resources to be utilized we have to allow our uh, uh, data centers to be able to communicate to these uh, systems so that is where you know Uh, we will also have to maybe develop some uh, infra so that we allow that uh, thing to happen water treatment and recycling is something in my opinion it that is the future everything else on one side because uh, look at it in the economic sense of things water supply drinking water it is an inelastic demand growth population increase by 1. Point, uh, let's say 1.1% uh, in a year that is probably how its water requirement will increase but anything other than an irrigation also is largely wherever it is not uh, truly irrigated that you can provide a double cropping for a single crop area it is largely inelastic growth the problem in most of in my opinion most of our policy making right now is that we are looking at only inelastic growth areas and where we fail and at that time chahal sir was uh, uh, i think secretary wrd 
2017 when I had come to visit Maharashtra from government of India side. And he said a very interesting thing. Ki what happens is that once you go for a single crop area, you provide them irrigation. Then people grow sugar cane. And your, your expectation was that it, it is using let's say 100 liters of water. Suddenly goes to 200 and you had designed it for 120 and the entire project then goes back to zero. But it's not going back to zero. And that is that were his words. That is prosperity of the people what we actually wanted out of the project. So the point, limited point being that these are areas of inelastic growth. So when you go from one uh, one uh, cropping pattern to a totally different cropping pattern, or one season of cropping total total different two seasons of cropping, or an industrial growth coming in that area because you were able to provide drinking water and water supply, or probably new businesses coming which were water intensive at that point of time. When I was Jalgaon collector, I remember one of the industries just came and said, "Sir, we we want to invest 600 crores. The only thing that I want." is that if you can assure us of water during April and May. I think that is where I what I call inelastic demand growth. You made something, but there are, there are some very positive externalities coming out of that thing, but it has an impact of your water. So that is where your water treatment and recycling becomes extremely useful because that is something like uh, what I call solar energy. The thermal energy caters to all your elastic demand, all the inelastic demand, additional demand is something that this thing can take up. You are anyways throwing water in the river, better to use it as for industry and for all these new things. STP water anyways is being used for construction in many areas. So I think this is something that we will probably need to focus in a very big way in the long run, specifically in urban areas. Community engagement, I won't talk about it because that is important and everybody knows about it. I think one thing I kind of missed out here is uh, private sector participation because one thing that we are looking at in a very, very big way is par private sector participation. Even when we are talking, so we had a pro uh, meeting with uh, multilateral banks uh, last week in DEA in Delhi. All of them are interested in funding infra projects in water. The thing is, they want things to come out in a way which are very sustainable. So what I want from uh, out of this uh, presentation or out of this conference is that if we can work together to make some very good projects which can be sustainable in the long run. I am 100% sure getting funding right now in the domain of water is not the tougher part. The tougher part is being able to showcase execution, to showcase that it will be successful and to be able to make it sustainable. So once we are able to do those things, I do not see any problem in terms of, you know, uh, water uh, funding or anything. I think the world is ready to fund water supply. So at the last, I will just say one thing that what we right now need is to actually come out of, uh, of our uh, thought processes to make to increase our standards of water supply, like in water supply and sanitation, what I always say is we can probably look at something like water supply becoming equivalent to a electricity supply. And one thing that, uh, that differentiates is that quality of service. Can we guarantee quality of service to our customers, which is people, the citizens of this country? Probably we can think of something like that for WRD. I do not know about that too much because I have not studied it. But I think these are... Uh, parameters, when you think of these parameters, QoS is one parameter which will realign the entire way of our thinking. So can we do that is one question that I will always leave you with. Thank you. All right. I think those were really, really crisp insights. Can we have another huge round of applause? Very to the point. Thank you so much, sir.